Construction is one of the hardest industries to work in with tight schedules, budgets, and just kind of a lot of stress sometimes. So in today's video, I hope to make that a little bit easier for you by going over the top 10 mistakes that I see on construction projects. And hopefully you can take at least one of these to try to avoid them on one of your own construction projects. So whether you have your own construction company or maybe you're just starting out in the industry, all of these can apply to you and hopefully you can help make your project that much more successful. So if that sounds good to you, hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family family here on YouTube. And now let's get into it. So one of the most common mistakes on construction projects is issues with procurement. And procurement is essentially getting your materials to the job site on time. And procurement issues are one of the hardest things to overcome because if you don't have the material on site, there is just nothing you can do. You can't just pull cabinets out of thin air. Your whole job site comes to a standstill because you don't have material. And especially living here in Hawaii where we literally have to ship everything here, it's just that much more important. And during the pandemic, this only got worse and made it that much more important for people to track on their construction jobs. So how do you do this? How do you improve on this? So a couple of tips, you should have some sort of procurement log where you are tracking all of your materials. And then you ask your suppliers, how long is this gonna take you to get on the project? And ideally what you're doing is you're taking that lead time or essentially that time that it's gonna take for it to get to your job site. You're taking that time and then you back it all the way out to when your shop drawing submittals, all of that needs to get approved. And then when you look at that, that you can use that to plan in order for you to make sure you get all your paperwork done so that you can order the material on time or early. And another thing as well, I have seen it become more and more important these days to truly understand the supply chain of your material. So the base layer is just asking your supplier how long it's gonna take. But I think you always wanna take that step further and truly understand what comes with that time frame. So say you ask your supplier, it's gonna take six weeks for the cabins to come to the project site. Then you would ask them, what does that six weeks entail? Is that six weeks of just shipping? Is that six weeks of fabrication and shipping? And then you identify the risks of what's happening. So you understand is all of your material in one location or does the supplier need to get all their raw materials from elsewhere. So there are times where say you're ordering your glass for the project and the aluminum may be coming from one country, the glass may be coming from one country and you might be assembling it in another and then that goes through multiple shipments to finally get to your job site. So say potentially there is like civil unrest in some country or you know of like some big storm then you know that your materials are going to get affected by all of the stuff that happens outside in the world. So again procurement is so important and the more you understand your process and how the materials are going to get to your job site the better it will be for for you. And always remember you are dead in the water if you don't have your materials on site. There is no amount of overtime, manpower, anything that can overcome material just not being there. The only thing would be to order temporary material which you then install yourself and then have to take out later but again, you never really wanna to get to that state. And the next common mistake is not coordinating amongst different disciplines. So what do I mean by this? For example, if you're taking like a cabinetry shop drawing, what are you really looking at? Some people may think, okay, I'm just gonna look at the architecture drawings for the cabinets, just make sure that all the dimensions match and just send it off. And that is the first layer, but there's so much more to that coordination to help you avoid issues in the field. And as a good engineer or somebody that's trying to set the job up for success, you want to make sure that the installers are just its kind of plug and play and you don't want a lackluster shop drawing review being the issue of holding up work in the field. So in terms of cabinetry, think about what other things are actually in the system. You have a countertop, you're gonna have plumbing fixtures, you might have electrical outlets, you might have under cabinet lighting, and sometimes you'll have built-in appliances. So you have to look at all of those different entities to make sure your cabinets are set up properly for everything to get installed. So let's take you over to a kitchen over here. As you can see, this cabinetry stack is wall to wall and floor to ceiling. So when you're reviewing it, you wanna make sure that you have play up and down on the ceiling and on the sides, calling scribes or filler pieces because you can't friction fit all of the stuff in there. And sometimes you may have a fire sprinkler head right overhead and you wanna make sure that your cabinet doors don't open up and hit that fire sprinkler. And then obviously you can see the microwave opening, the oven opening, the refrigerator refrigerator, dishwasher, and, and how are you wiring all of those appliances together? Do you need access to any of that? Do you have proper backing in the wall to support these cabinets? Does the sink that's specified fit inside the box? Do you have enough room for your sink and your faucet? All of these things need to be considered when you're reviewing cabinets. And you can see that there's so much that's going into just this one entity. It's like that across the board. And that's why a lot of times these things have challenges on construction projects. So mistake number three, not taking the field's opinion into consideration. So I saw this graphic and hope I can find it on the screen, but basically what they're saying is that you look at a construction project or any job, and then you look at who is closest to the issues at hand. The people that are closest to the issues at hand have in theory, the best opinion on what the 
problems are. These are the people closest to the issue, so they should be able to provide potentially the best solutions to anything that's happening out there. And they can have a lot of good insight on how things should get installed, how you should order material, how do you want it to be delivered to site, and even down to the sequence and the schedule. All of these things, you wanna be able to get feedback from the field because one, you can get the best information from people who are actually doing the work, and two, you get their buy-in because they're the ones that are giving their opinion. And whenever people give their opinion, they wanna make sure that any advice that they give can be seen through, and it just makes a more collaborative environment. I know there's a lot of people out there that probably just think they know better, but again, Again, I really think bringing in the field people, bringing in your trades to get opinions to make sure that everyone is on the same page is one of the best ways for you to coordinate your disciplines in construction. So number four, not taking into account material tolerances. So what do I mean by this? Concrete has a very different tolerance than drywall. Concrete has more tolerance. If you try to flush out concrete and drywall together, you'll likely not get the perfect joint that you're looking for. So when you look through the drawings, look for all the materials coming together and make sure that they have the same tolerances. Or for example, like in our cabinetry, if they didn't give us any room for scribes, they wanted everything to be friction fit, and they also didn't want to pay to level the floor, you're going to have some issues on the install. And one of the big things as well, like on slopes on ramps, sometimes they're designed at the maximum amount of slope, not taking into account that the concrete can be off plus or minus three quarter. And then when you pour it, you're out of ADA tolerance so then you might have to chip out the ramp. But ultimately, you have to bring up these concerns early to make sure that your crews have a fighting chance at installing this properly within their given tolerances. And granted, yes, the design should also account for this, but us as contractors, you know, a lot of times the buck stops with us. So the more that you can understand your different material tolerances, look at how they're transitioning to other materials and making sure that everything is considered, it'll help you out in the long run. And then mistake number five, envelope details. And you hear about it, right? Water intrusion, it's one of the big issues in construction and a lot of it just comes down to incomplete envelope details that weren't talked about early enough on the project. One of the biggest high leverage moves that I think you can do for this is you can take an elevation of a building and just circle all the places where three different materials come together. Three different materials usually means three different trades, three different products, right? Three different manufacturers and how those all tie together don't necessarily always jive. And a lot of times these envelope details that you see in like your construction drawings or architectural drawings may not match the actual envelope details of the actual thing itself. So when you're reviewing the shop drawings, you wanna make sure that you're doing that cross-reference between the two and making sure that everything's going to match because sometimes your slab edge, if you build it off of the architectural drawings, but then when you look at the actual glass submittal, you'll have some like little nuances here and there where you wanna pull back edges and all those kinds of things. So again, you wanna talk about envelope details as soon as possible in the project. And anytime you have different manufacturers coming together, you want to have that conversation because likely that's not going to be a warrantable material because obviously it's, you know, all different guys playing in the sandbox. Mistake number six, not following or knowing the contract. And that's what makes construction very interesting as a business because depending on your owner, depending on what the team is around, there's not one right way to run a job. But at the end of the day, if things ever go south, people always go back to the contract. So you wanna know what your risk is out there as a contractor. What are you signing up for? What are your liquidated damages or LDs if you're late? You wanna understand what kind of notices you're supposed to be giving to the owner if they're causing some sort of delay with design changes. A lot of times there's timeframes as well where you're supposed to be notifying them of added costs due to changes. So again, you kind of look at the contract as your playbook, all right, or the rules of the game. And it's kind of ill advised to play any game unless you actually understand and know the rules. So as much as it is fun building, you also need to be able to understand and read your own contract and know where your risk lies and have a game plan of how you want to run the project within the parameters of the contract. So mistake number seven, understanding when you need field measurements. So this also kind of ties into procurement because there are certain items that need to be field measured or are best to be field measured. And you wanna make sure that you take that into account when you're doing procurement. Because if you're waiting until everything else is installed to field measure, you wanna make sure that you're tying everything to the right activity in your schedule so that you can back out dates from that field measurement date. So a lot of times railings are one that usually need field measurement because they have required maximum gaps that they have between themselves and the structure. There's a lot of times during renovation, you're just building within the existing space so you're not able to just standardize the countertops per se. So you wanna be having these conversations as soon as possible during the construction project 
so that you can make sure that you have the material when you need it on site. Mistake number eight, having the wrong people in the wrong positions. And construction is a people business and probably just like any company, you'll have people that outsell their abilities or maybe people that have the technical skills but don't have the soft skills in order to execute the role properly. So knowing who you have as your people is so important so that you can place them properly on teams. And especially if you're running your own construction company, I found that the more jobs that I do, I do realize that having team chemistry is so important to the success of the project. So sometimes most technically sound guy isn't necessarily the right guy to lead the project because he can't empower other people. He can't get everyone to band together and move in a direction. He just swallows all the work for himself. But you need to know that about the people when you put them on projects. And ultimately you wanna make sure that people aren't getting disenchanted because you know they have bad leadership or all those kinds of things. And I've seen it time and time again where you know people get too high up and then they don't really know who their people truly are. And the trickle down effect of having the wrong people and in mostly higher positions can really affect the team and ultimately your ability to run as successful of a project as you can. And mistake number nine, is not understanding material compatibility. So this kind of ties into envelope details as well, but just because a product is specified doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to work on the surface. So there's two types of compatibility tests. Again, if you have the three things coming together and you have different manufacturers, do all those things stick to each other. Understanding what layer of the envelope is everything supposed to get installed so that everything gets sealed properly. Or another thing as well, if you're going to waterproof a surface, how does that surface need to be prepped? What kind of concrete pattern material you're going to use and is that going to work with the paint or the coating that you're going to put on and you'll know if you have a good painter or coder when they're asking for you for samples to do compatibility tests because they want to make sure that all the products that they put on are going to work but anything that you can think of sealants coatings anything that is going to try to adhere to another surface you want to make sure you understand what kind of prep work is required for that or what kind of surface it's going to attach to and again you don't want to be at the end of the project and all this stuff is just starting to delaminate compatibility. Hopefully you're compatible with this channel. And the last mistake, but potentially the most important is just not getting into the details enough. And from what I see, at least in Hawaii's industry, with the dwindling labor market, there's just less people that truly know how to build, have seen it, done it with their hands. So people that are running work don't necessarily have all that background in order for them to make good decisions. So the only way to close that gap is to truly understand the drawings and what details will and will not work. But if you don't have the field background, and you're not looking at the drawings and you're not diving deep into the details, you're gonna get caught with your pants down on jobs. And especially if you're a key decision maker, you can't delegate all the details down and depending on the experience of the team beneath you, but you have to have some sort of basis on how you're trying to guide the ship. Like if you're gonna come up with schedule durations, you better know what details of the structure, what details of the finish are going to take more or less time. Because not every job is the same. So yes, you can have past experience, but if you don't know the intricacies of your own project, again, you're just exposing yourself and your team to risk. I mean, I'll tell you this, I have never heard somebody that was detail oriented and took all that time that regretted it. So those are 10 of the most common mistakes that I see on construction projects. If there's any more that you see and you want me to talk about or anything that you want me to elaborate more in this video, please comment below and I'll do my best to reply to you. I really love the construction industry and I want to do my best to help you all out. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next one.